close the public hearing on Senate Bill 818. Just to be clear, so that we know we all know which bill we're talking about. Okay. Thank you so much <laughs> Thank for reading these. And we will um, continue our discussion since it's still open of the public hearing on Senate Bill 514. And I believe um, we have four panel members to speak to it. Michelle uh, Bangin, followed by Laura Rose Mazaris, Roxanne Wilson, and then Dwight Holton. Welcome. If you'd perhaps like to come up two at a time. Uh, so uh, let's see, Michelle Bangin and Laura Rose uh, Misaris. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you, Chair Patterson, Vice Chair Hayden, and members of the committee. My name is Michelle Bangin. Um, I'm from Corvallis, Oregon. And I'm joining you today as the equity co-chair of the Oregon Alliance to Prevent Suicide, as well as the co-founder of Insight Agency for Change, a public health social enterprise. I'm also joining you as someone with lived experience and a passion for suicide prevention. Um, I'm here in full support of Senate Bill 514. In the past, Governor Brown and now Governor Kotek have both identified suicide prevention as a priority here in Oregon. Our state has put significant energy and resources towards addressing youth suicide, which that includes um, the creation of a comprehensive suicide prevention framework and youth suicide intervention and prevention plan. This has really led to increased availability of resources and support for many youth serving agencies. But suicide prevention is a lifespan issue. It only makes sense to put the same thoughtful, strategic, concerted effort towards addressing suicide among adults as well. And that youth-focused work has given us a valuable roadmap to do so. As Senator Thatcher just shared with us, this work is so important because we continue to see suicide as the 10th leading cause of death here in our state, the second leading cause of death among our young folks all the way to age 34, and in really newly released data, third leading cause of death for Oregonians ages 35 to 44. We're also losing many older adults to suicide, and we are seeing especially high suicide rates in certain professions. Um, suicide rates are going up significantly in other states, and Oregon already has one of the highest. But suicide is preventable. It requires us to use proven strategies, equitable approaches, coordinated efforts, and the voices of those with lived experience. I've had the honor of being one of over 130 individuals who have worked on the creation of our state's very first adult suicide intervention and prevention plan. And by passing Senate Bill 514, that work can live up to its promise and potential at a time when it's needed more than ever. So I ask that you please vote in favor of Senate Bill 514, ensuring the sustainability of this thoughtful and strategic work to address suicide across the lifespan. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you so much for your testimony today. I'd like to call on Laura Rose Pizarras. Thank you. Um, dear Chair and Vice Chair Hayden and members of the Senate Health Care Committee, thank you for this opportunity to speak today on this topic of adult suicide prevention. That's near and dear my heart and the heart of many others across our state. Um, I was very surprised looking at some of the data to learn that it's New research shows it affects at least 135 lives. We're more connected these days. The old statistic used to say it affected six people for every loss. But when we look at that new number and the rate that's happening in Oregon um, in a span of 8.33 years, that adds up to a million lives in Oregon are impacted one way or another by the suicide loss tragedy. And also many lives, of course, also when there's a suicide attempt or a struggle with suicidality that can be um, ongoing. It's not always a once and done situation um, in terms of the struggle. Sometimes the struggle, I know people that struggle weekly, daily, hourly, um, always encouraging them, you know, one moment at a time, um, we can get through it together. Great work happened in our state with the convening of um, 130 plus stakeholders like Michelle and so many others, people from industry, people from different sectors. Um, and so I really ask that this bill is supported. Uh, it asks for two things, the position of adult suicide prevention coordinator that's already in Oregon Health Authority's budget. I'm simply asking that it be put in statute so that it won't be subject to budget drifts, leadership changes. It won't go 
away. We need it to carry out that plan. Um, we need support to continue. And secondly, the advisory committee or council, however that ends up looking and getting named, right now Oregon has a fantastic alliance to prevent suicide uh, that's been focused on youth suicide prevention. I believe this language in this bill helps dovetail the youth suicide prevention work with the adult suicide prevention work that's much needed. And um, so having that lived voice included is so valuable and so important. I think it's actually part of the healing. A lot of suicide's topic is about not having hope, not having any power or control in things that sometimes happen. Um, and whereas, you know, we have a we learn that we have a voice that the wisdom and the insight, the knowledge that's gained, what works, what doesn't work. We want to make sure Oregon has those feedback loops across the state with membership of lived experience um, and takes that very seriously and puts it in a parity with some of the other advisory councils. We don't want a weak advisory council effort that's satisfying a grant on a temporary basis. We want something that's going to be fixed and ongoing so we can really tackle this huge issue in our state. Um, I can't thank the other people that have shown up and submitted testimony enough. Um, please hear our voices and thank you so much for your for your time. And there's materials online I've uploaded, so hopefully that'll be helpful. Thank you very much. And it was very helpful your clarification that the position does is currently budgeted, mm -hmm. but this would put it in statute so that it would remain and 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 shine a, a, a light on the fact that it's needed coordination between youth suicide prevention and adult suicide prevention. Thank you. That was thank you. I'd like to call now on Roxanne Wilson, followed by Dwight Halton. Good afternoon, Chair Patterson, Vice Chair Hayden, and members of the committee. My name is Roxanne Franklin Wilson. I live in Dayton, Yamhill County, Oregon, um, and I am here today to testify in support of Senate Bill 514. There are three things I'd like to share with you today. The first thing is the magnitude of the ripple effects of suicide related to underserved adults who fall in the gaps between programs for youth and older adults. Between 7,000 and 12,000 children in the U.S. lose a parent to suicide each year, and those who lost a parent to suicide as children or teens are three times more likely to die by suicide. The second thing I want, I want to share with you um, is how being abandoned by our mental health care teams and by our previous county as a whole following suicide loss impacted my family as an example of why elevating the voices of individuals with live experience to contribute substantially to the advi an advisory committee as well as state oversight via a standing adult suicide prevention coordinator is so important. In 2016, my family lost my uncle Jeff to suicide and received, received zero postvention services. Two years later, we lost our daughter Chloe to suicide just four days after she was here with me actually at the Capitol advocating for mental health services. Um, the response to our loss by the professional mental health community and by the county we lived in at the time was not only completely void of any kind of postvention services or support, but was actually harmful to our family. It was the attorneys who directed our county and all of its service organizations, including our family's mental health care team, to sever communication with our family to avoid a lawsuit. They even told the county commissioner, who had been my husband's friend for over 20 years, and had been going to the grocery shopping for our family after Chloe passed that he wasn't allowed to communicate with us either. So not only did we not receive services and support to help us navigate the traumatic, traumatic loss of our 14-year-old daughter by suicide, but the county allowed attorneys to place the value of the dollar above the value of human lives and intentionally abandoned my family in our greatest time of need which directly and substantially contributed to several close calls with suicide by every single surviving member of my family. Finally, I want to express uh, my full understanding of the state's historic reluctance to take action that may impede the autonomy of its counties and a great respect for the state's due diligence in that regard. However, when our counties knowingly and significantly cause harm 
to grieving Oregon families. We count on our state legislators to represent our best interests and at the very least to protect us from being harmed by our own county governments with the state oversight this bill would provide. What you do regarding this bill and others related to suicide will make far reaching ripples um, and it'll affect uh, the ripples will have effects no matter what action you take or choose or choose not to take. <laughs> and I'm asking you today to please choose positive ripples for your Oregon constituents like our family and we're counting on you. Thank you for letting me speak. Thank you for your testimony, but even more, we're terribly sorry for the incredible losses that your family have suffered, your uncle and your daughter. Thank you. And then to have to live with that isolation, the, of your, the loss of your community support after that. I would just like to see us do something so this doesn't get repeated. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to call on Dwight Holton. Executive Director of Lines for Life. Um, I believe Mr. Holton is joining us remotely, if I'm not mistaken. Welcome. That's correct. That's correct. I'm here. Um, we, good afternoon. You know, uh, Mr. Chair Holton, Patterson. you're very, very quiet. Can you turn up your volume a little bit? I will try my best. How's oh, that? I'll use my better. outdoor voice. Much okay, better. good. Thank you. Thank you, and I apologize. Teams does not always love me. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Chair Patterson, members of the committee. My name is Dwight Holton, and I'm the director of Lines for Life, an Oregon nonprofit dedicated to preventing substance abuse and suicide and promoting mental wellness. Uh, I am here to offer the full support of Lines for Life for Senate Bill 514. At Lines for Life, we are home to the new 988 National Behavioral Health Crisis Line for most Oregon counties. We also do prevention and policy work around suicide prevention. All in all, we talk to over 150,000 people in crisis every year. So this topic is near and dear to our mission and our hearts. I think we know, as we've heard from panelists today, that the challenge of preventing suicide is a critical mission for our generation and our time. Every day in Oregon, we lose two or three friends and neighbors and loved ones to suicide every day. But I'm here with good news. We know we can make a difference and we know how because we've seen it happen. We know how to turn that curve around as Senator Thatcher said at the outset that we wanted to do. Uh, we know it in part from tangible data that we've seen the results in the youth suicide prevention work that we've done. What we've seen when the state adopted a, a, a youth, or created a youth suicide prevention coordinator position and adopted a youth suicide prevention strategy was having a center of gravity at Oregon Health Authority, the Oregon Health Authority, working together with community expertise, with guidance from powerful voices of lived experience, and moving along the line towards a unified strategy, we can have a very serious impact. The Oregon Health Authority uh, told us recently in data that we have now had three years in a row uh, 2019, 2020, and 2021, where the youth suicide in Oregon has actually gone down. We have tremendous work to do. Our average is still above average, the national average, but we're moving the curve in the right direction here, and we're doing it because of precisely the kind of initiative that Senator Thatcher's bill, so SB 18, will bring to Oregon. So I'm here in full support. We know the results. We know this can work and have important impacts. We need to build on it, not shrink it. And uh, the reality is that the bulk of suicides in Oregon are among adults. The highest challenges are among older adults. The Oregon Health Authority has, pri has prioritized that already, but this will give us a galvanizing center of gravity and a accountable strategic plan that will bring us closer and closer to making a difference. Thank you very much. I'm happy to add some questions. Thank you so much, Mr. Holton. Appreciate your testimony very much. Thank you for the work that you do. Um, we have two others testifying remotely, Catherine Latimer, followed by Robert Granger. And welcome. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Hi, um, my name is Catherine Latimer, and I um, have spent six years in an ER, 
at an emergency room, and now I am a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner. Um, I went back to school specifically because of what I saw in the emergency department um, was not adequate. And we were just um, placing a Band-Aid on something that was a much deeper problem. Uh, I wanted to be able to help before it was a crisis. I've never seen mental health, or I've seen mental health um, go on unaddressed for far too long. And it's been kind of an afterthought in healthcare services, despite our brain being connected to our body. We need more integrated care for dual diagnosis. They're almost always dual diagnosis. Um, this would reduce stigma. It would prevent losses like my friend Amy. She's one of three people that I know that have killed themselves in 2021. Um, Amy was a bright force of nature. She actually worked as a psychiatric nurse for children. But she didn't have the support that she needed herself. And the ripples of her loss are large and many. Um, we need more hope. We need more to be done earlier and often. And I support both of these bills um, emphatically. And I think of Amy all the time. And <clears throat> I just want you to think about her when voting for these bills. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we are so sorry to hear the losses of three of your friends and colleagues. There's each person a life is so precious. So thank you so much for testifying today. Um, I'd like to call uh, Robert Granger, healthcare chairman of the First United Methodist Church in Eugene, who's um, speaking to this bill remotely. <coughs> Welcome. Thank you. Uh, I'm really calling in terms of Senate Bill 704, uh, particularly. But, uh, my con my concern. Oh, is I'm so questions. sorry, Mr. Um, oops, Mr. Granger. Um, we'll need to just speak to the bill on be, that's open for a public hearing right now, which is Senate Bill 514. Did you have any testimony on this suicide uh, prevention bill? No, I, the other one I signed up for and I and it didn't get called. Now I'm getting called. Oh, our apologies. I um, will put you make sure that you're put on the list for Wednesday to testify remotely on that. We will be carrying over Senate Bill 704 on Wednesday. Thank you for being prepared to speak to that. Thank you. All right. Um, we have three more people testifying here in person on on Senate Bill 514. I'd like to call Kevin Fitz, followed by Annette Marcus, followed by Lisa Stiller. Chair, I, I don't think I need to testify. Okay, thank you so much. I don't see Kevin Fitz, actually. Is he here? Um, um, are, are you Lisa or are you Annette? I'm Annette. Oh, thank you so much. Is Lisa Stiller here? Don't see her then. And... I don't, are you remote, are, Annette, are you joining us remotely? Annette is remote. I mean, I mean, Lisa, sorry. Hearing not, then we're going to go ahead and close the hearing on Senate Bill 514. Thank you so much. And I believe Senator Thatcher has left, but thanks to Senator Thatcher again also for bringing this bill. Okay, thank you. So now we're going to open the reopened pub Senate Bill 818 public hearing, and we'll begin with um, uh, staff for Sarah, Senator Sarah Gelser Blue, and is also a sponsor of this bill. Just, uh, Mr. Dietz, could you just for the record uh, recap uh, briefly uh, what Senate Bill 818 would do, just to clarify? So yes. As we're reopening this hearing. Chair Patterson, uh, Vice Chair Hayden, members of the committee, Senate Bill 818 requires the Oregon Health Authority to develop a list of suicide risk assessment and treatment continuing education opportunities that are tailored to healthcare providers based on their licensure. And I provided a, a more robust explanation earlier. I'll be succinct for these purposes. And just a reminder that all the agendas and the and the meeting materials are on OLS um, available for your review at any time. Welcome. 
Welcome. Greetings, Chair Patterson, members of the committee. My name is Lena Jamoraez, and I am Chief of Staff to Senator Gelser Bluen. And as many know here, I'm also a suicide survivor. Senator Gelser Bluen is unable to be here today due to an unexpected family issue that took her out of state. However, the Senator did ask me to appear in person here to put her strong support for this measure on the record. Our office has worked closely with these amazing advocates who will explain both the mechanics of the bill and its needed <laughs> importance to our state. We're happy to continue working with advocates and committee members on any amendments should they arise. And once again, I'm just here to reiterate Senator Gelser Bluen's strong support for this bill. Good bill should pass. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I'd like to know, uh, we have next a four person panel. I um, would like to invite folks two at a time, if they would. Um, Donald Erickson, co-chair of the Workforce Committee at the Oregon Alliance for the Prevention of Suicide, followed by Charlotte Lumby, co-chair of the Oregon Alliance to Prevent Suicide. And if you would introduce yourself for the record, welcome. Chair Patterson and Vice Chair Hayden and committee members, uh, thank you so much for the time today. Really appreciate it. My name is Don Erickson, and uh, I uh, have been a licensed uh, clinician a behavioral health clinician for 46 years now. And uh, I'm also the, uh, as uh, uh, Chair Patterson, as you mentioned, the uh, uh, co-chair for the Workforce uh, Committee for the Oregon Alliance to Pre Prevent Suicide. Uh, in uh, 2021, the Oregon legislature passed uh, Senate Bill 2315, which required training for suicide risk assessment, treatment, and management uh, for most licensed and certified behavioral health professionals. Uh, this adds Oregon to a growing list of states recognizing that the overwhelming number of graduate schools uh, in this country uh, have not and continue not to provide uh, coursework on uh, graduate pre uh, suicide prevention, on graduate level school suicide prevention. Uh, that, uh, by the way, the ones that do <laughs> almost are entirely elective courses, not required courses. And so very, very few uh, uh, graduates in all levels of uh, behavioral health receive any sort of, of training in suicide prevention, uh, assessment, uh, or postvention. Uh, from, um, uh, from practitioner reports uh, to the Oregon uh, licensing boards, we see strong evidence that those professional groups uh, are now responding to the requirements outlined in Senate Bill 2315 and are increasing their uh, skills in working with suicidal clients or potentially suicidal clients. Uh, so we're, we're incredibly grateful that SB 2315 um, has gone into effect. However, this still leaves uh, a critical gap in making uh, crucial connections with people considering taking their lives. Uh, we know with the most very current uh, data that 80% of people who die uh, by suicide have seen a met, um, have been seen in a medical setting in the prior year, uh, and people who die uh, and many within 30 days. The goal of this bill is to prevent suicide by increasing the number of medical providers uh, who uh, take suicide prevention training. And with that, I'll pass it to my colleague. Thank you. Thank you so much. Dear Chair Patterson and Vice Chair Hayden and members of the committee, my name is Charlotte Lumby, and I want to thank you for having me here today. I live in Kaiser, Oregon, and I am here to support SB 818. I am a survivor to loss by suicide of my grandmother and my husband, and a mom of a daughter who struggled with suicide ideation and attempts, and a prior ICU nurse of 15 years who worked with patients with thoughts of suicide and behaviors. My passion for suicide prevention and intervention has grown fiercely, and I am now the co-chair of the Oregon Alliance to Prevent Suicide and the co-founder of Insight Agency for Change, a social enterprise working to build suicide prevention capacity in our communities. As a mom, I will never, ever forget my daughter's journey with suicide ideation and attempts and the individuals in our workforce who knew how to work with that and those who didn't. A doctor who once told my daughter she was just seeking attention as she was pleading to go back to a pediatric psychiatric unit because it was the only place she had found help to prevent her suicide attempts. That same physician then discharged her without resources or tools to support her life. It was just one of the many times her pain and desperation that led her to considering suicide were dismissed by medical professionals. Those same medical professionals are my peers. As I've worked as an ICU nurse for 15 years, I'd like to share some of my experiences that stand out to me in regards to working with my patients. 
I was upholding medical holds and placing four point restraints on people suffering from trauma and suicide thoughts. It was only after I became educated in suicide prevention and intervention that I was able to care for my patients in a way that allowed them to be heard, to process their pain, and allowed them to choose life for themselves. Four point, four point restraints and, and medical holds were no longer needed, and my peers were asking me to come talk to their patients to get them out of restraints. If there's one thing I wanna leave you here with today, it's that all, we're all doing the best that we know how to do, and we can't do better until we know better. And that is where SB 818 can make a difference by making sure healthcare professionals know better how to recognize the signs of suicide and support that person choose life. I was pleased to learn this weekend that the Oregon Nurses Association agrees and endorses this bill. SBA 18 can provide an accessible training avenue for healthcare professionals, a critical first step in equipping them with the skills to assess, safely plan, and prevent suicide. We need this cohesive system so that we don't have to leave the majority of physicians and nurses untrained and challenged to care for their most vulnerable patient population so that we can save lives. That's why I'm asking you to please vote in favor of SB 818. Thank you for your time and consideration and my extra time. Thank you so much. Thank you for your testimony today and for your work on behalf of others. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, we uh, would now, I believe, Angela Perry, board member of the American <laughs> Foundation for Suicide Prevention, followed by Julie Schultz. And Angela, oh, welcome. Chair Patterson, Vice Chair Hayden, and committee members. I'm Angela Perry, and I'm here today to express my overwhelming support of Senate Bill 818. I'm a sixth generation Oregonian, born and raised in the Willamette Valley, a suicide attempt survivor, a person who has lost loved ones to suicide, and a supporter of friends and family members who live with mental health conditions. I've seen firsthand how both our health and mental health systems often fail to help the people who need it most. In order for medical providers to be comfortable talking with their clients about suicide and train to help, there must be appropriate training programs for medical providers. Continuing education is the purpose of this bill. My first memory of self-harming was when I was in the first grade, and the frequency and types of self-harm have evolved as I've aged. The professionals I saw underestimated how much I was thinking about killing myself. My entire childhood, teen, and young adult years, my many diagnoses, polycystic ovarian syndrome, fibromyalgia, depression, anxiety, ARFID, and bulimia, no medical providers ever asked me the questions. And since they weren't asking, I didn't think to volunteer the information. It was, after all, what I saw as the worst thing about myself. I have had to learn how to advocate for myself with my mental and physical health conditions as an adult. The loss of another friend to suicide led me to find the Oregon chapter of American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, of which I am now the chair of the board of directors. In the years that I've been involved with AFSP, I've met countless others, from a five-year-old little boy who was with his mom at Portland Pride who asked to come over because he had just been released from the hospital for his suicide attempt, to all the thousands of survivors I have met at events across our state. I know my journey is not unique, I'm far from the first to share in these experiences, and I know I will not be the last. For those of you who have never had to fight to save yourself from yourself, let me tell you, it's terrifying, it's lonely, and it took me 36 years to find any care provider who actually knew how to ask and address my answers to the most important questions. Are you suicidal? Are you thinking of hurting yourself? Do you want to die? My answers to the first two questions are always yes. Do I want to die, though? Definitely not. So I ask you to please take this bill seriously. Please help make it so all the healthcare professionals are trained to recognize, acknowledge, and help those who are struggling with suicide. My life and the lives of so many people I love depend on it. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your testimony and your advocacy. Yes. Thank you. Um, I believe that Julie Schultz is joining us remotely, and then we will have two others um, speaking to this bill. Uh, before we close the public hearing. Welcome, Julie, thank you. Thank you, Chair Patterson. Uh, Chair Patterson, Vice Chair Hayden, and committee members, for the record, my name is Julie Schultz. I'm the Executive Director of the Oregon Pediatric Society and Co-Chair of the Workforce Committee for the Oregon Alliance to Prevent Suicide. I'd like to thank Senators Gelser, Bluen, Thatcher, and Gorsuch from this committee for sponsoring the bill. 
You've heard today about our need to increase the percentage of physicians, nurses, and other medical professionals who get trained in suicide prevention. To save time, I'm going to direct you to my written testimony for more information about why OPS supports this bill. The Alliance wants to make it easier for medical providers to uh, assess, uh, excuse me, <laughs> the Alliance wants to make it easier for medical providers to access a range of relevant continuing medical education in order to build their skills in suicide screening, assessment, lethal means counseling, and safety planning. To do that, we need to build the capacity of that training system to accommodate tens of thousands of Oregon medical providers. With the support of this bill, OHA suicide prevention programs and staff are uniquely positioned to do this work. I'd also like to point out the OHA report shared with you that provides powerful data on the current state of suicide prevention continuing education. Through state licensing board reporting, we already have the infrastructure in place for tracking increased practitioner training numbers. And we know it's effective. The University of Oregon Suicide Prevention Research Lab analyzes reported improvements after people take Oregon's Big River trainings, and the increase in knowledge and confidence can be substantial. The Alliance to Prevent Suicide and the Oregon Pediatric Society urge you to vote yes to these life-saving capacity building investments. I thank you for your consideration. Thank you very much for your testimony, both here um, remotely and also the written testimony that you sent in as well. Very grateful to you for your work. Uh, the last two people we'll hear from today, um, Annette Marcus, Suicide Prevention Policy Manager, followed by Kath Catherine Latimer. Well, I thought we already heard from Catherine. That's okay. Oh, okay. Welcome. Thank you for speaking to this bill. Good afternoon, Senator Patterson, Vice Chair Hayden, and members of the committee. I'm going to just make a couple of brief remarks because these are really my colleagues that have been testifying to you. My name is Annette Marcus. I am the policy manager of the Oregon Alliance to Prevent Suicide. Uh, the Alliance is a legislatively enacted advisory to the OHA. We have 50 appointed members and really about another couple of hundred people that are really engaged with our work. And what we are asking for really is, is simple. It's let's make it accessible and easy to get to for healthcare providers to find the training and to, under, to, to get to build their competency in, around the area of assessing suicide for suicide. I think it's a horrible tragedy for healthcare professionals when they lose someone to suicide. And what we also know is that healthcare providers themselves are struggling with suicidality on an increasing basis because of the intense pressures in those systems. Because of that, we have chosen this time not to ask for a mandate around continuing education, rather to kind of open the doors and create a playing field where providers would have easy access to get the training. Um, the, the Oregon Health Authority, and I believe in the Senator's budget, there's already a training position uh, put in around suicide prevention. And that would be a position that we would hope would be working on House Bill 2315 that Don Erickson told you about earlier, and also provide support for Senate Bill 818 if it passes. I really believe this measure will save people's lives. And thank you for your time and appreciation. Appreciate you. Thank you so much for your time and all the work you're doing. Yeah, thank you. Good yes. yes, and there's a question, please. Uh, thank you, Chair Patterson. So in reading this bill, I've looked it over pretty closely, was here when we kind of put legislatively in process um, your organization to do this. And it appears to me that the only change from our current, other than some technical ands and comments in and out uh, okay. here, is that you're wanting to bring awareness to the boards and actually engage with them by these four words, approved by the board. That, that seems to be the only change from what we are currently doing. Is that a correct assessment I, of, of what you're uh, wanting to accomplish with this? That the board acknowledges that the education is out there rather than the education just being out there, that you're requiring the board acknowledge uh, 
as uh, in line 33 of the bill where it says they're they're taking uh, some language out there they're adding and to the treatment and they've done that throughout the whole bill um, that it's actually approved by the board that seems to be the only change to what we're currently doing do I understand that correctly um, thank you for the question and I, I as I read through our own bill and the language translated into legislative language it I think we need to look very carefully to be sure we are doing what we want to do so and, and Essentially, what we are asking is, yes, we do want the licensing boards to acknowledge what's out there, but the real, the core of this is that there'd be a position at OHA that would actually develop the list of trainings and assess whether there were accessible quality trainings for the healthcare providers. And if you think about what's happened with, for example, pain management, over the years, while we're not making this a requirement, over the years, the OHA has really worked on making that pain management course for physicians and healthcare professionals be more responsive, be effective, and that's really the kind of work we're looking for here. We, suicide prevention, we keep learning new information about how to do it effectively, and we want to be sure that our healthcare providers in Oregon have the best information they can so that they can, can be healers like they want to be. for your testimony. And our, um, Catherine Latimer is joining us remotely. Welcome back. Hi, I'll keep this brief since I already testified. Um, I think this bill is a good first step. I hope that we can continue to build upon these screening services. Do also could you, oh. could you reintroduce yourself just for the public yes. record? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my name is Catherine Latimer. Um, I have worked as an emergency room nurse for six years, and now I am starting a career in psychiatric mental health um, nursing as a practitioner. Um, let's see, where was I? <laughs> um, I think I, I'm hoping we can build upon these screening services to also train more people in trauma-informed care um, through all medical fields. Um, I ask that the interventions are evidence-based and will continue to expand. For six years in the ER, I used a screening tool that did not have the data to back up any validity. Um, we all have trauma, but not all of us have the support protect and protective factors to overcome this trauma. After going to school for mental health nursing, there's so much that I have learned that could have saved lives. And I support this bill. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, and thank you for doing this work for years and for your commitment to, to learning more and helping more. Very much appreciate it. Um, I, I don't believe we have anyone else signed up to testify to Senate Bill 818. So with thanks to um, our LPRO staff who helped organize this, this was a Herculean task to organize the number of folks who signed up to testify today. And with apologies to everyone who didn't get to testify earlier, but I do believe we've gotten through everyone on this, these last two bills. We'll go to the, uh, Senate, Senate, oh, the public hearing on Senate Bill 818. Um, again, if anyone has any written testimony that they'd like to submit for either Senate Bill 514 or Senate Bill 818, they're welcome to do so until 1, 1 p.m. on Wednesday, the um, 15th of February. If you have testimony to submit to Senate Bill 704 in writing, please um, know that you're, we will be reopening that on Wednesday, but you can submit written testimony till 1 p.m. on Friday since we're reopening it on Wednesday. So is there anything for the good of the order? Hearing none, thank you to everyone. And so we will adjourn the meeting for today. Thank you.